are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win show. Good morning and welcome to another Evolve to Win show with Heather and Paul. Hi, Paul. Hey, I got to get this thing off your face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for You had all that me. prep time. You should have like, <laughs> looked on. at yourself once before you had gone on. All uh, right. So <clears throat> what we're talking about today is why you should set yourself up to fail. So we watched a movie last night named First Man and with Ryan Gosling. And it actually was a pretty good movie. It was about the um, the Apollo first man flight to the moon. And what the one statement that they said, and then I'll let you share that, Heather. Um, but I thought it was very interesting because that Apollo 1 flight, if you ever remember, the Apollo 1 flight is where there was a fire in the cockpit and three of the astronauts lost their lives. And then it was about a year and a half later, that was in 1967, and in 69, um, of course, we landed on the moon with Apollo 10. So I thought it was an interesting movie as Apollo far as... Apollo 11? Oh, I'm sorry, Apollo 11. Yeah. And so I, I thought it was interesting, the history behind that. But I think one thing that we, both Heather and I picked up on that movie, was that, um, you know, it went from Apollo 1 to Apollo 11, and it was a year and a half, and there were a lot of things that had to happen um, to make that happen, you know, to land two people on the moon. and um, and so it was a lot about failing. And so we thought about that as, you know, as a business idea and how often we don't allow ourselves to fail as much as we should. And quite frankly, how often you get the recognition of the finished project, the successful <clears throat> project, and you see that and you forget about how much effort and persistence and failure, quite frankly, it takes before you achieve success. So the, the, theory here is we should really be creating an environment where it's safe to fail because it's failure during a safe environment that makes it okay to go out and succeed in the real world. Um, in the movie, Neil Armstrong said to one of his bosses, Well, to like one of the, yeah, one yeah, of the bosses, I right. I, I couldn't, so the thing about the movie for me, it was a little too longer than it needed to be with too much information. But that aside, the rest of it was, it was really, really insightful. I mean, you know, everyone knows about Neil Armstrong taking the first step of the moon. We all know the quote he said, which apparently come to find out later, there was some kind of misquote and he said something else. And Michael Collins was the third astronaut. That Michael nobody, Collins. You could have bet my life on it. I would have never guessed. Maybe Buzz and definitely Neil. Yeah. But... Michael Collins, really? I know. Didn't know. Did not know there was a third man who went to the moon. And if you really pushed me, I'm not sure I would have come up with Buzz either as the <laughs> second guy. So that, I guess, also so goes So what did Neil show, say to his boss? Well, what Neil said to his boss was, um, we need to be able to fail, right? They, that they were, they were running missions, and he was getting some pushback on running one of these missions. And he said, we need to fail down here so we don't fail up there. And, you know, that for me was probably the most significant point that was made. It was shortly after he had lost, you know, three colleagues in the Apollo 1. And, you, you know, I certainly didn't realize that there were all those other missions that happened to prepare for that moon landing. To me, that just solved the moon landing still to this day blows my mind how, yeah. how our engineers could create that and make that happen. Um, but when you when you take that into your real world, you know, where what is your relationship to failure? We all react, I think, just a little bit differently to failure. It shows up differently for for us. You know, some people get angry, some get frustrated, anxious, some just start laughing, some shut down. So, I mean, first of all, think about whether or not you give yourself per permission to fail, because anytime we're trying something new, we you know, are very likely not going to get it right the first time. Right. And I think a lot of times we give up way before we have the opportunity for success. And can you imagine, the, I mean, the way they portrayed Neil Armstrong in that meeting, in that movie, was, I think, really amazing. And I'm sure it's not even close to capturing who he really was. But, you know, that guy, a single human being, put himself in 
massive danger again and again and again and again for the bigger mission, which is, you know, to, to get to the moon. Right. And to beat the Russians. Yeah. Right. The, yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, it's, it's also about failing too, is it's, I mean, it's embarrassing to fail. I mean, people, you, you don't want to, to be looked at as somebody who fails all the time. So there's a, so there's a whole ego thing that goes around it, but there's mm -hmm. also, you know, at work, there's also the, you know, the, you know, how safe are you at work to be able to fail? So yeah, yeah. if you're able to make mistakes and to grow as a person, as an, an employee, you know, how are you as a leader creating a, uh, a safe space for failure, really? Right? Yeah, yeah, truly. Because I think there are some managers, leaders who have a fear of failure. They don't want to see their team fail. Right, and yeah, for because it's a reflection of them. Well, with great yeah. intentions, they yeah. don't want someone to have to go through whatever pain might be associated with failure. And a lot of times, we project our own thinking on other people. By the way, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see you as you are. I see you as I am. Right? I see you through my lens. So if I have this horrible fear of failure, I'm going to do everything I can to protect you from having to go through failure. Right? So in leadership. I think it's really, really valuable to, first of all, connect and become really aware of what is my relationship to failure. What would you say for you? When you think about failing, <clears throat> what does it make you think and how does it make you react? <clears throat> well, I think in the, in the past, it, it, makes me, it, it would make me feel like I was less than and um, maybe not, I wouldn't feel as good about myself if I was failing. So I always wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I wanted to get it right because it was just efficient. Like getting things wrong is a pain in the butt, right? Yeah. It's like to get that wrong, although you learn from your mistakes, hopefully, um, they, they do take you down a different path that you have to learn your mistake from and then go back and correct it. So there is time that's involved in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then the, the next question is if, if you feel less than or you don't feel good in the face of failure, what do you do to prevent that feeling? Do you avoid doing something that you could fail at? Do you, you know, how do you set yourself up to protect yourself? Do you recognize that at all? Um, no, I don't recognize it in general. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you'll try anything and it's okay if you fail? Or do you it's protect it's more it's, I protect myself, but it's way more calculated mm -hmm. to make sure. But I have to, I mean, it, it is a way to play small as well. Yeah. You know, to not fail. Well, I think, I think one of the things as I'm asking you these questions, I'm thinking about my answers as well. And I know that there are times where I'm, it, you know, when I'm being pushed outside my comfort zone, it's something I don't want to do. I will build a story around it that allows me to procrastinate doing whatever that thing is, yeah. which really is just protecting myself from the embarrassment of failure, right? right? I know I've done that. I used to do that big time with video. Um, you've, you may have heard me say this before, but I used to like just dread the idea of getting on video, which is in part why we do this show so that um, we can play a bigger game, right? And hopefully impact more people for good. But you know what? Al just reminded me, um, Al Matagrani reminded me that um, we did an interview, a podcast with him. Mm -hmm. And one of the big takeaways, and it's a, it's a great, really great podcast, and you should go back and listen to it. If you go back onto uh, heatherchristie.com or evolveglobal.com um, and under our podcast, you can find that one, Al Monagrano. Uh, he went to West Point. He served in uh, the military for 20 odd years, but he, what he talked about was underwriting the mistakes. So setting people up to be able to fail. Actually creating yeah. that opportunity for failure for them so they yeah. can experience it. Yeah. And it was a yeah. really cool, um, you know, um, uh, different way of thinking about it. Yeah. You know, because most leaders feel like that, you know, failures of their team are a reflection of them. But what Al uh, Monagrano was talking about was that he he was forcing his team, his his uh, um, his soldiers to fail and fail often, so that and it's exactly like a, what Neil Armstrong said is he wants them to fail in safe. a safe an environment. Yes. When if we're in combat, he wants them to be able to understand all those lessons and take everything and and all of the knowledge and experience that comes along with that into combat, yeah. into combat, not in, you know, and have no problem with it during 
And so let's so if that interview with Alba was a great interview. Yeah. He gave some some great insight on this topic. If we bring that into a really practical business example, think about sales, right? When when you have someone on your team going in for a massive client opportunity, are they having that conversation for the first time or have they been drilled again and again and again and thrown all these different objections so that they know how to handle it real time? Like I think about we won't go into politics, but let's just talk for a moment about the prep time that someone does for a debate. They're just battered with questions in litigation, right? If your attorney is really, really great in prepping you in the right way, they are going to do everything they can to make you fail on the pretend stand before they put you on the real stand because they want you to be ready. So I just think it's, I think it's a great example. So uh, you, you know what, I'm going to give one more. This weekend, Paul made me do it on the tennis courts, and I was getting so frustrated. Clearly for me, what shows up in failure is ultimate frustration and impatience. Okay, I go, I go really fast to impatient. Um, you were having me hit the shorter ball down the line. So mm-hmm. he's just feeding me ball after ball after ball, and he's making me rip it instead of just you know trying to position it. And I... I must have missed the first, what, 20, 30 balls, like, and not by a little, but like hitting them in the fence. And I was so frustrated by it. And I thought, you know what, this is why I don't have the comfort of trying that shot in the way that I need to, like ripping that shot, changing the direction of that ball when we're in match play, because I can't do it during practice. So I think that's another great example of being willing to allow yourself to get it wrong until your body figures out your mind and your body together figure out how to get it right yeah so that's that's a great point and that's so we're talking about creating a place for yourself and setting yourself up to fail so that you can make the mistakes hopefully in a uh, much more comfortable environment and then when you are you know out there either selling or if you're leading people or if you're in in technical or marketing that Mm -hmm. you learn you know what a lot of um you know we learn from from uh, some of our clients who are great online marketers i mean that's one thing that you see now that wasn't around 20 years ago i I guess it was but not at Not at not at this level yeah where online marketers they just throw everything out and they see what sticks. So it's the mm-hmm. whole like A-B testing. But they do like, instead of just doing two different tests of an advertisement, they do like hundreds of them mm-hmm. and they find out which one works the best because it's almost guaranteed that it's the one that they didn't think would work the best yeah. is the one that works. So it's it's Even failing. though you don't really like that much, right. it would be the most successful ad that you run. Yeah, yeah. totally. So um, yeah, it, it's, it hits every aspect of your business and giving your employees the gift of failure. I mean, really, go back to think about Al, what he did for his men that were training out in that field, you know, really giving them the gift of failing before they go out live and have to actually do this for real. So whether it's giving a presentation, like please, please never let a public speaking presentation be delivered for the first time in front of a live audience. Never do that. Practice first, fail first, videotape yourself first so that you can see what that would have looked like if you went live with that speech that first time. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did that one time. You did what? Uh, I got up and spoke without practicing, and it was a disaster. (laughs) And I'll tell you what, I did learn a valuable lesson in that. And um, I thought I was... I thought it was good enough to be able to go up there and kind of wing it. Mm-hmm. And it was in front of a lot of people. And it and I totally screwed it up. I had the amygdala ha- hijack where where my my fight or flight just took over and I froze and I, I, I couldn't even say the words. I was totally discombobulated. What a nightmare. Do not do that unless you want to use it as a as a way to learn from as your mistakes. As a way to learn. Yeah. Hey, if you want to do it that way and learn the way Paul did in front of a full live audience, <laughs> I remember that. And, you know, I also remember in that moment when he went completely blank, I wanted to save you. I yeah. wanted to jump up on that stage and just help you out and ask you a question or do something. And it took everything in me to just let you be there in that moment and get yourself out of it. And he actually did a great job. He literally just told people what happened for him. He he explained that he just completely lost his train of thought, apologized, 
regrouped, took a couple breaths, got oxygen back in the brain, yeah. and then moved on. Yeah. But you're right. It's um, any time you think about a time that you failed when it really counted, ask yourself, did you practice enough in advance in a supportive environment where you were allowed to fail until you got it right? So, And, and this also, you know, just to kind of finish up on this topic, and, and not that we are experts in raising children because we don't have any. Um, we've had a couple we, exchange students. We've raised and, other people's kids yeah, for short periods and of time. And pets and stuff like that. But, <laughs> you know, you hear of the, the lawnmower parents, you know, and those are parents who go around and cut down every problem for their child so that their child does not have to deal with, you know, running into any obstructions and having to figure it out themselves, which allows them to create and, and run into the, and, and make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it really is beneficial to, you know, let people make mistakes. Because if you, if you think back, if you're listening to this now and you think back on some of the best lessons that you've learned, it's probably from mistakes that you've made. I know financially when I was young, um, I made some terrible financial mistakes when I was young. And I luckily, my parents would not save me. And I had to figure it out myself, and it was one of the best lessons, and it, and it carries on today. Today, I feel like I am, you know, that's one of my stronger suits is financials now. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's, but it all came from that. I, if I didn't go through that, I definitely wouldn't be where I am now Yeah. as far as that goes. So, so yeah, we, so to reiterate, not experts in raising children, <laughs> but, you're, but I'm glad that you linked those as well yeah. because this lesson definitely flows through. We are experts, however, in making mistakes. We've gotten really good at that and, uh, you know, just really making sure that if you've got something big, something really important coming up for you, set up that environment in advance to fail. If you're the leader, you know, talk to your, talk to your team about what, how they feel, what their relationship is to failure and really help them like Al does. Uh, help them with their ability to fail before it really counts, before it before it really hurts, yeah. before it really stings. Hey, well, thank you for joining us for another Evolve to Win show. I uh, hope you enjoyed the topic. And if you'd like to connect with us, please go to heatherchristie.com and you can join our, our leadership list. We also are on YouTube and... Oh, where else, Heather? All of the social media <laughs> yeah. channels you can find us, but just keep in mind, there's another Heather Christie out there. She's a rock star. I'm not. She's so. kind of a rock star. Oh, I wish I was a rock star. If I had that talent, man. All right. Well, have an awesome week. You guys have a great we'll day. We'll see you next week.